All right, so for this lecture, I'll go through this quick. <laughs> All right. So absolute convergence means that okay, the the sum of absolute values of the term converges, and the theorem says that okay, absolute converge implies the original series converge. And the proof is just the triangle inequality and the Cauchy criteria. And also the addition of limits, right? If this series converged A, this series converged B, then a series of their addition converged to A plus B. Or you let this, this, right? One line proof. And now we're gonna talk about something called Cauchy product. Where CN is defined in this way. Well, the motivation of this definition is, right, if you have two uh, power series and they multiply them, right, k from 1 to n, from 0 to n, and they multiply it out, and you regroup it, and you define it like this, right? But we note that if a n converge to a, b n converge to b, we cannot guarantee that a n times b n converges to a times b. And now we're going to have a lemma. Well, this lemma, we're going to use it in the next theorem, the proof of next theorem. So, about a sequence, well, right here we talk about this, right? We cannot guarantee but if this, this series converges absolutely, then we can say that, oh, uh, the, our guess, like, holds. CN is equal to AP. Yes then CN is equal to AB, right? Which is basically, which is basically, um, A and B and, no, which is basically, yeah, A and B and equals to AB, which is basically this case. Okay. No, it's not. Sorry. Oh, just, just the this this Cauchy product coverages to the product of the series. Now to prove it, so first here we have some notations here, and beta n is the error from the partial sum to the actual limit is the error. Well, then we know that the error, we know that bn approaches zero as n approaches to infinity, right? Because we beta n equals to the limit of bn minus b, which is equal to b minus b, which is equal to zero. Simple. Okay, now, now, if you just if you just write C and out, if you just write them out, it's going to be like this, right? And as you go to a n times b n and a n b one until a n of b n, so just equal to n b n, and there's a one b zero, and until a one b n minus one, right? And then a n b zero, which is here, <laughs> and now. We just write b n as b plus beta n, right? Because beta n is equal to b n minus b, right? And then again, we see that oh, all the a n's they're adding with b. So we put put this, and the rest just write them out. And now, for this portion, we define it, we like gamma n equal to this portion, 
right? <laughs> so we're going to have this is equal to a and b plus gamma n. And what we want to show is that, okay, what I want to show is that, okay, gamma approaches zero as n approaches to infinity. Then we have cn approaches to ab, which is what we want. Okay, and now we use the fact that a, uh, the summation is converges absolutely. <laughs> so we put alpha is equal to their absolute sum. And since b and approaches zero, we use the definition, right? Choose f of zero, choose n, such that this is true, right? Or even just, just be in less than epsilon. Feels better, right? And then we write out gamma n, which is less than or equal to this. Basically, we just put here and here. Before, it's just like big, big thing, right? If you add, if you add uh, absolute sign on both sides, but now we split them using the triangle inequality. And then this is this one. And for all of them, we split them again, right? We split them out. We split, let me show you. We split them again and then plus, and then now we know that all the B ends, right, at the cutoff, they're less than epsilon, right? So less than epsilon of all of them added up. And then all of them added up is less than what? It's less than their limit, right? Of course it's less than their limit because there are some of non-negative terms, right? Now, which is equal to this plus this. Now, we do the triangle inequality thing again, right? Say, maybe like this. Yeah, like this plus epsilon n. So, now, here's the thing. <laughs> we let this whole thing equals to uh, nita n. I like the word nita. <laughs> I like the symbol. All right. So we know that as n approaches infinity, a n approaches zero because, because this converge, right? Absolute converges. Then the, each term converges to zero, <laughs> which means that Uh, which means that nita nita n right and nita n approaches to epsilon alpha why because each of them approaches zero and this is a fixed number right so this portion is going to converge to zero as n approaches infinity and this portion is going to be fixed so we know that nita n is going to converge to epsilon alpha and what we know is that we're going to use this lemma here we put gamma n less than or equal to nita n, right? Here's gamma n, less than or equal to nita n, right? <laughs> then we note that the upper limit of gamma n is less than or equal to the upper limit of nita n, nita n, which is equal to limit of nita n which is equal to epsilon alpha so now we have gamma n less than or equal to epsilon times alpha where epsilon is arbitrary right but for any epsilon greater than zero which means that we need this thing 
converges, we need this thing equal to zero. <laughs> okay. As this thing is equal to zero, what we can say is that, well, these are non-negative terms. And their limb soup is zero. <laughs> then their limit zero. So and we we use this <coughs> lemma again on the infimums. Oh I didn't write it down. The infimum basically says that okay if S N is greater than or damn it. Sn is less than or equal to Tn, then their lower limit of Sn is less than or equal to the lower limit of Tn. It's lim soup and lim inf are both satisfied this inequality. This I pull up from nowhere, I know it's in the textbook, and I skipped it because I thought it's useless, but now it's useful. But I'm lazy to prove it because I'm rushing. Yeah. Right. So now we know that all the gamma ends they're greater than zero, right? So the limit nth of zero is less than or equal to the lower limit of gamma n. And this is equal to zero. <laughs> Right, so we have, we also have lower limit of gamma n square equal to zero. <laughs> Which means that lower limit gamma n Greater than or equal to upper limit of n, just by direct substitution, right? You just sub zero as this, right? Zero is this one. <laughs> direct substitution, okay. But we know that the limit of upper limit is greater than the lower limit. So we must have the lower mid limit is equal to the upper limit, which gives that the, li the series converges, right? And converges to zero. <laughs> now, if gamma n converges to zero, then gamma n itself converges to zero, right? And the theorem is followed. So we have, so, so we're done.